Loving and gracious Father, we thank you so much for your love. Amazing and wonderful for us that you created us because, of, because you loved us. And you gave us everything that we do have, including our sexuality, because you love us. Many times we have misused it. Forgive us, Lord. But help us as we look at this topic that has somehow turned the world against itself. Grant that as we speak, as we share, your voice will be heard. May all glory return to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Now, I do have, of course, a PowerPoint, as you can see, and what I'm going to do now is first is to try and run through it, uh, but first of all, just for you to know that uh, this is a topic that is so contemporary to the issues that are facing us today, irrespective of where you are. It may be worse for some, but it certainly is facing us and it's not about to abate. Let me begin by defining this LGBT very quickly. And uh, by the way, in Canada, they even add two S before that LGBT. They do have laws that protect two spirit. I'm not going to try and explain that since I was given LGBT. But it's an acronym that stands for a number of words. L stands for lesbian. And that's the female attraction to female. G, gay, or homosexual is actually used in kind of interchangeably. Same sex or homosexual attraction. Bisexual, a person who is sexually attracted to both sexes. Transgender, well, that's now the new kid on the block. <laughs> uh, gender expression not congruent with their birth sex. And some of these people are people that we have known who actually go and try to change their sex organs. Queer, those that are different. That's just simple. Those that are different. But we also have intersex, a general term for a variety of bodies in which a person is born with a reproductive or sexual anatomy that does not fit into the two sexes, male and female. So those are called that. I will end with one which is asexual. Asexual. Asexual means someone who does not experience sexual attraction toward individuals of any particular gender. Now you notice that there is a plus because it doesn't end there. Every other time, someone is coming up and saying, but for me, I'm this. And so they are creating more and more to add to the acronym. But all of them are kind of represented, and you might have seen it, uh, the next uh, slide, please, with the rainbow. Okay, it occurs in many different ways. And I think I've seen one of the people here in Uganda wearing rainbow socks. And the journalists made sure because they already, there were already a lot of rumors about him. And so the media made sure that when they were taking the picture, they focused on the socks so that you know where he falls. But these rainbow colors have become their kind of flag or identity. Now, secondly, then I'm going to try and to describe what's happening what is there now? And to be honest, I can never exhaust everything that is there. But I'm calling it the new culture and the current trends that are there. I know that there is too much light and some of you from very far, you will pay the price for not sitting at the front. But the current trends, first of all, we need to recognize that this is a heavily sexualized generation. Heavily sexualized Go and watch a movie. And if they don't, you know, and most of the movies that are coming out must have 
a homosexual of one sort or the other. And I'm going to use the word homosexual generally. Because otherwise, we'll be going through all these lesbian, gay, what? No, no, no. I'm just going to use the word homosexual as the general term for all of them. But the movies that are watched, and even children's cartoons, even children's cartoons now have uh, homosexuals in there. And the purpose is to portray homosexuality as a legitimate alternative. You know, one of the things that changes us is just repetition. It's just repetition. Just show someone exactly the same thing again and again and again. And before you know it, the first thing they do is they start saying, okay, I know. So they tolerate it. But with the time, it becomes accepted. So a person is known by, this, in this day and age, a person is known by their sexual expression. In other words, we have reduced personhood to your sexuality. And I don't know, very soon we will not be asking, are you a man or a woman? We will be asking, what, say, what gender are you? The word that is used mostly is gender. Now, we need to understand that Christianity does not define people by their sexuality or even by their sin. That's not how Christianity does it. Now, in the new culture, we need to understand that there is a decades-long agenda that has been there, has been in existence, well-orchestrated, bigger than the, our Anti-Homosexuality Act. Our Anti-Homosexuality Act has simply stirred up things. And so people immediately then start saying, oh, what are you doing? We were moving in this direction. Why are you taking us back? Some people have even said we are primitive, but I would rather be primitive and godly than modern and completely ungodly. Now, you need also to understand that originally it was just lesbian, bisexual, and gay. LGB or LBG, LGB. The transgender people at one time then came to apply that they also be, joined, be added on. And uh, the LGB people said, no, 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 no. At first they were refused. Then with the time, of course, they accepted them. But the important thing is that language has become the strong weapon for this change. If you think about it, what has actually happened, it started, there has been a kind of evolution. The very first word that was talked about was sodomy. Now, sodomy was describing an act, someone who does an act. And so, obviously, it was rejected. As you know very well that in our cultures, it's totally rejected. It's not like it has never happened, but it's rejected. So sodomy was the first word. Then it moved to homosexuality. And then at that point, it was like a condition. And so you sympathize with someone. Hey, that person is homosexual. What a pity. But today, a lot more aggressive. It has now become an identity. I am gay, period. Just like I can say, I am a man. Or you can say you are a woman. So it has now become an identity. Now, how can you deny someone what they are, presumably, by creation? Or how they were born? In fact, increasingly, what is happening in some countries is that when a baby is born, they are not given a gender category. That's really what is happening right now. The other thing that we need to understand in terms of how language has been evolving is that the word gender has replaced the word sex. So you don't ask, if you know very well, I mean, not too long ago we would ask, what sex is the child that has been born? You know, but now the word gender has not only replaced the word sex, but the word gender has itself been redefined, as we shall see so that it can fit with the political correctness. So, continuing with the new culture, 
There is definitely, I'm sure you are aware, there is very aggressive recruitment. I first got to know of this in the 90s. I was working with young people, running youth conferences, and we got to learn, and I remember one young man who came from a school, he had been in senior one, and he was raped by older boys in this dormitory after they had been watching, they, they had watched a movie, an explicit gay movie. So these things are not new. In Uganda, there has been a lot of aggression, but of course it is happening in every country now, particularly Africa. Now what they use are solicitations using money or a promise of a future abroad. One time I was flying to Nairobi some years ago, and so I was going there for a board meeting, and I was received by a private uh, taxi company, but they were also waiting for someone else. And on the board, it said something like, the unknown person. So I, and he was, when I came, I said, here I am. And he said, okay, just wait a little bit. And he kept on showing the unknown thing coming from Uganda. And I asked him, who are these unknown people? And he said, oh, you know, these, <laughs> they're homosexuals. You know, running out. They are promised. And they are given opportunity to go abroad as if it is heaven. You know? Many argue we cannot legislate on morality. Now, this is one of the biggest things with many governments, particularly Western governments, that you can never legislate on morality. Absolute rubbish. It is pressure, it's nothing more. Because you see, morality touches on everything. If you steal, if you rob, if you kill, all of that is morality, isn't it? So why do you legislate on that and you can't legislate on this, making it private? So, and I'm afraid that many Christians have been caught up in this kind of thing, uh, this fallacy. So even when we were in GAFCON, uh, in Kigali, I was very involved in that. You know, our friends from the West, they really thought, ah, uh, ah, uh, you know, why is Uganda coming up with that? You cannot legislate morality. That's their argument. And they do not understand, yes, you may call it private, you may call it whatever, but what about some of the things that I do hope to show you here that are happening here in Uganda? Okay. Continuing with the new culture, G, today it's politically incorrect, politically incorrect in a number of countries to emphasize the differences between male and female. You're not supposed to do that. Language is slowly evolving to completely remove the binary divide. In other words, male and, male and female categories. Those are slowly being removed. Let's, let me turn now to scripture. The testimony, if you can go to the next slide, the testimony of God's word. We have already read from here, particularly verses 26 and 27. But let me begin first of all by saying that this God that we believe in does not dictate lies. He speaks the truth. Now Jesus himself said in Matthew chapter 19 verse 4 to 6 that God's intent is an inseparable marriage between a man and a woman. We must emphasize that. The fact that people fail does not change what God has dictated. That's the problem that we are getting. He designed sexual expression exclusively for that relationship. That's where you have sex. That's why we tell you young people, wait. It's coming, and when it comes, you'll have a great time. But if you don't wait, you are also planting the seed for tears, even for later. Okay? So when God says that, it means that all deviant expressions of our sexuality come from the fall. Both heterosexual, we are not just talking about the homosexuals, but whether they are heterosexual or homosexual, all of them, when we go wrong, it's because of the fall. Now, mind you that homosexuality has existed for ages. But history has never given it a stamp of approval as we see today. 
It has never given it a stamp of approval. Okay, let's look at what God made. God's male and female design. And a number of things that I'm going to be saying here. First and foremost, creating us male and female images. The triune God in his relationships. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit as a committed, caring, and intimate relationship between God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Secondly, and I'm sorry for running fast on this. Secondly, creating us male and female emphasizes our complementarity. We are complementary. I loved my wife because she was different. And I could see in her something that would complement me. And one of the things that is so expressly complementary is our reproductive physiology. A woman is created differently in the pelvic region from the man. That's quite obvious. When a baby would be born, we would ask, what sex is it? What were they looking at? They were not looking at the face or the hair or anything. They were looking at the sexual organs. What type are they? And then you know whether it's male or it's female. And I can tell you, even now when you give birth, they still come that way. Right? They still come that way. It's not any different. And not only that, science has revealed that the males are made, their genes are different. As you can see, they do have the XY chromosomes where the women have the XX. So it is us who determine whether the child is going to be a boy or a girl. If I give a Y, the child is a boy. If I give an X, she contributes to one of her exes, and it's a girl. You see that? So God has created this complementarity that so we are designed for each other physically, socially, and emotionally. And of course, you could say more. Scientists have also found, by the way, that every male cell in the body is different from every female cell in the body. We are different. We are very different. There is no way you can fight it. Okay, I'm going to skip some of those others, but let me go to the next slide. In this design, God intended a permanent male-female marriage relationship. I've already mentioned that before. But fourthly, it is also a spiritual reality. Reflecting God's relationship with his people. One of the very, uh, one of the terms that God likes using in the Old Testament is husband. And he did when Israel goes astray, what does God say? They've committed adultery, usually worshipping other gods. So idolatry itself is a form of adultery. When we come to the New Testament... What is the term that Jesus uses? He says that he's the groom. We are the bride. You know, so it reflects that spiritual reality, male and female. The next one, uh, that is, by the way, my family. And there is only one member. At the bottom one, uh, misses one member who, is, who I decided to put at the top, who was born more recently. But that's my family, and that picture was taken just last uh, last uh, December. Now, one of the things that's very important in God's creation is that we would be fruitful and multiply. Don't you think I've done that? I've contributed my part. I do have four children. Three of them are married. And I have seven grandchildren and I'm asking for more. The problem with many of us today is we are increasingly buying into a childless marriage. If it comes, let it come because you are unable to bear, but God's purpose is give birth. Give birth and fill the earth. Of course, filling the earth is not your responsibility alone, so don't say, let me now do it alone. 
That's not what he says. Okay? So, friends, God's male and female design, there are many attempts to blur the male-female differences, but these have not removed the real differences. They still exist. I like what John Stott said there. He summarized it this way. He said that Jesus affirmed the three truths, and let me read them for you. That the first truth is that heterosexual gender is a divine creation. In other words, creating us male and female. Two, heterosexual marriage is a divine institution. Three, heterosexual fidelity is the divine intention. And then he concluded by saying a homosexual liaison is a breach of all three of these divine purposes. So any person who gets involved in the LGBT whatever is actually walking against God's ways. And what did we read from the passage? God gave them up. Now that statement, God gave them, gave them up. Let's not read it lightly. If you look at verse 18, it says, For the wrath of God is revealed. So to say that he gave them up is the same as saying that God's wrath is upon any person who walks contrary to God's purpose. Let me look at some, of, uh, some causes of the present delusion. Uh, I think I'll skip that particular slide. Let's go to the causes immediately. The next, the next slide. Okay, the prevailing environment predisposes some to vulnerability. So there are some amongst us who may be more vulnerable than others for different reasons. And these are some of the reasons that I'm giving here. The present fatherlessness. I remember many years ago, I was still actually a university chaplain here. A man who came and narrated to us how he ended up in homosexuality as a result, it was in the chapel here, and as a result of the father's relationship with the family. And he said that the last time that he ever saw his father was in a shootout with the police. Okay? So, the way people are raised in the home matters. Good fathers these days are rare. Young men, when you marry, please, please, please be a good father. There is actually another book I have in my library which says that most homosexuals are a result of bad fathers. And James Dobson, some of you may know the name, he, say, he said in one of his statements, a book again that I have in my library, that he has counseled many homosexuals. In fact, he said hundreds. None of them had a good relationship with his father. None of them. Young men, please, please, prepare yourself well. I'm not saying that the women go scot-free. But the other reason is doubling in pornography. Pornography. It's terrible. Because you know what pornography does? Is it fills your mind with a filth and romanticizes what is wicked. It will not tell you the consequences, as I will show you. It simply excites you. And it fuels you. And you feel, I must do about it. Listen, even if we are married, pornography is a no-go area. It's a no-go area. I don't have to be attracted to my wife sexually through watching porn. I don't have to. She's my wife. She's special. And I think I talked about that the last time. Thirdly, there is a history of sexual abuse. Okay? Especially when it is unresolved. Say you have been raped. You have been defiled. Or something, something that people have done. These can also cause problems. Okay, so let's go to the recruitment strategies, and I will just show you a few. I'm not going to do all of them, because time is against me, because I want to rush to the consequences. The first one, first recruitment strategy is exactly what I've talked about, pornography. Pornography. You know, just like what we are, what we are talking about with cartoons being given to children, 
there is a lot of explicit pornographic material that is passed around to people. And that is happening in Uganda. Now I'm talking about things that actually are here in Uganda. You may not know, but they are happening. And don't hide your head in the sand to think that these things are not there. Okay? The spreading of all those things. Two, inducement with money. I've already talked about that. And other favors. Inducement with money. Money, 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 money. Ugandans will die of money. Wherever we are, we are looking for money. When we go into government, we steal. Right? Money. And other favors, of course. Three, they use school or university staff to recruit. And you'll understand why I'm saying that. Because what they do is take you out. I remember actually not too long ago, a few years ago, uh, a, one of our bishops who was invited to a conference. Was it in London or South Africa? Do you remember Bishop Obetia? One of those two. He was invited there by these people. And the purpose was, of course, they invite you a very, very innocent thing. Listen, when I was vice chancellor here, they would invite me in all sorts of conferences. And some of them, the moment I would get the letter, look at it. I had a waste basket right there, and it served the purpose. Do you see? So they are very good at that. They catch you, and they make sure that you are in the net, and after that, they will do whatever they want to do. Fourthly, rights and gender-based sex education programs. I, we've been, my wife and I have been strong advocates. Sex education should be done by the parents. If you don't know how to do it, we can help you. But it has to be done by the parents. And I'm showing you there are some of the programs that are happening here in Uganda. You remember the UNICEF books? UNICEF brought in some books and they wanted these to be used. And you know, they finance them. They fund. But when it comes to talking about male and female, they also add something else. You know, those are some of the things that are happening. For those of you who have young children, please watch out. That's why it is very important to watch the homework the children are doing. Sexuality education, comprehensive or not comprehensive, it means the same thing. It's financed by those people with a certain interest. The other big one is media. And I'll just mention the media. I'm not going to do too much about that. But the media, the media, the media. Some of you are doing mass comm, I suppose. That's a big, big thing. The media. They use media campaigns. I'm not going to look at, so skip the two uh, slides. And I will just mention a few things on that recruitment strategy F, where we talk about recruit gays or gay sympathizers in the big entertainment industry. You know, they show you someone who is your hero. Huh? And then you become so, you know, so taken up by this person. They use gay entertainment and sports artists. And for young people, beware of those things you call bashes. They are happening here in Uganda. Things like Kadanke, you've heard about it. Things like Buzz. Why do you have to go for all these things? Those are things that are used to recruit you or to train you in some of the things that they want you to do. Aha. Uh -huh. I take and pay young and brilliant Africans, Ugandans, for weeks of indoctrination. They take you for a treat. And that actually is similar to what I told you about recruiting even university staff or, staff or even school staff. And taking them aside so that they can do They can offer you jobs and things like that. Let me just go to the next one. I just want the next, uh, uh, the, the last slide on recruitment. And I just want to look at P, if you can display P. At the national level, powerful Western nations, black male African leaders. How many of you saw the letter that Mr. Biden, uh, his assistant or whatever, wrote to Uganda recently about Agoa? Have any of you read it? Yeah? 
You hear that? That's exactly what I'm talking about. A lot of pressure. And you know, we bow so quickly because we need. But my need must never become something another person uses to compromise me. That's one thing I will not accept. Okay? There is even a legal, party, a legal battle that is happening concerning the uh, Anti-Homosexuality Act. And you know what? It's financed. It's financed. So you better know that. Okay? I'm part of an organization that is, try, that is working in the, in, the, in the background to fight on this thing. Because that thing is not saying that every homosexual, wherever you see him, you kill him. That is the negative campaign that they use. We don't kill homosexuals. How many homosexuals have we killed in Uganda? Zero. I remember one time I traveled out of the country. They had just killed a man here, uh, a homosexual in Mukono. And, uh, you know, I had gone for a Christian conference. And then this lady said, oh, you are the people who kill homosexuals. And I said, what? This man was killed by a fellow homosexual. You remember the case? It's homosexuals killing themselves. How do we come in? You know, Uganda has never killed a single homosexual. Not a single one. And indeed, there is no intention to kill anyone. So that, that is just total nonsense. Okay. I want to move to the consequences, please. To the consequences, and I will just say a few things, and then I will shut up. First of all, what we have read in the book of Romans, and I, I have not dwelt so much in the scripture, I would have loved to, but uh, the nature of topic that I was given, I think it's important for you to be exposed to some of the dangers, the consequences, the effects of getting involved. The first one is very clear. It's there, a curse or judgment from God. That's what is actually mentioned in Romans chapter 1, verse 26 to 27. Okay? But I want you to, to hear this. 73% of homosexuals surveyed had at some point had sex with boys 16 to 19 or younger. In other words, it's a well-known fact, by the way. It's not just, you know, in the U.S., I remember when we lived there, they were talking about it. Homosexuals, it's not like every homosexual does it, but definitely the incidence of pedophiles among homosexuals is higher than it is for heterosexuals. So shouldn't we open our eyes and ask ourselves what is happening? Thirdly, short life expectancy. I wish I could just address this whole issue. You get involved, you definitely are cutting down on your age. It says the median age of death for them is 50 or less. 50 or less. In fact, it's much worse for transgender it's much worse for transgender. The transgender people, and I have watched uh, clips and, and so forth, and I've read about it, there is an increased risk of overall mor mortality ranging from 30. In other words, coming down, if you have a level, the age at which most people die, 34% down. You know? So this is what we are talking about. Um, so, th these dangers. But it goes on, HIV infection. HIV infection is very serious among them. Uh, e sexually transmitted diseases are much higher for homosexuals and lesbians than for heterosexuals. And by the way, even if you're a lesbian, cancer of the throat, these are things that are happening and it's, it's everywhere. Okay, they are also prone to multiple partners, promiscuity, a professor here in Makerere, Christian, is no longer there, of course, but uh, he, did, he, did, he gave us this, this data. 500 to 1,000 partners in a lifetime. My, 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 my. <laughs> they, they never sit on one person. They just keep on going. And they will tell you, oh, but we, we need to be married. Listen, yeah, you need to be married, but many of them. In fact, I remember when I lived in Australia, coming across one of them. And now, in his case, he was bisexual. He was actually married to a wife, and they had two children. But he was also now going on and on and on and on. 
You know? Very strange man. I wish I had time to tell you that story. But here is a terrible thing about homosexual, male homosexuals in particular. Physical damage to anal muscles for homosexuals. Leading to incontinence. This was told me by a professor of anatomy because he has worked on many. But they get involved to the point where now the feces just come out. So they've got to wear pads. Do you see that? This is, this is the, the reality. So I don't want anyone to go through life like that. Do you? I don't think I do. Then there are mental disorders, anxiety and depression. Youth are four times more attacked by major depression. Three times more general, generalized anxiety disorder. Four times more conduct disorder. Four times more they commit suicide. Five times more drug dependence. These are the realities that we are living with. Okay, I must skip there and just come to the last uh, slides here. There are just a couple of slides. Way forward. So if I'm caught up in it, what do I do? You need, first of all, to recognize that your identity is either male or a female. Look between your legs. That's what you have. It tells you. Right? It tells you. Created, and God created you that way, and he loves you that way. You see? He loves you that way. Created in the image of God and loved by God. Secondly, believe in Christ and trust, Christ, trust God for your healing. It's possible. There are many people that have been, again here, uh, for those who have been in this university for long, you may remember the gentleman who came, who had come out and he was now married. I even visited him in his home. You know, and he spoke to us, do you remember, in the cathedral? Yeah? And many, many people, I mean, many Ugandans had never seen someone who had been a homosexual. They really came just to see. <laughs> but he's human. He's just like us. Created in God. And he wrote a book. A book that I, I believe many were able to read. Believe in Christ. It's possible to change. Thirdly, stop sexual experimentation of any sort. Pornography, stop it. Stop it. Okay? Even, even if you're heterosexual, you're better off pure. You're better off pure and preparing yourself. One of the campaigns that we used to run was the True Love Waits campaign. I hope you still do here. You know, so that people are able to wait until marriage. It's possible. We are not animals, and we talked about that before. Four Seek support by opening up to a trusted Christian friend or a counselor. Or a counselor. My wife has talked, she's a professional counselor, and she has talked to young people, even in primary school, who, are struck, who have been caught up in this web. And it's terrible. You know, young people being recruited like that. So, and it is important for that, that you also immerse yourself in Christian fellowship. God gave us the Christian fellowship so that we can be strengthened, we can be helped along the way as pilgrims. But lastly, pray, pray, pray. Pray. And for those of us who are not caught up in this, if you know someone, pray for them. God loves them. And God wants them to change. Let's not judge them. Let's not think that they, they you know, somehow they have horns on their head or something like that. These are human beings created by God and loved by God. May God bless you. Thank you very much.